Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Last week I did an introductory video on Adobe Bridge. That video was really just the basics of Adobe Bridge. How do you work with images in Bridge? How do you edit images from Bridge? And ultimately, how do you export images from Bridge as well? If you haven't seen that video, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. During that video, I mentioned that if you'd like to see me do more videos on Adobe Bridge, let me know in the comments. And many people commented that they wanted to see more videos on Adobe Bridge. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now in that video I did last week, I did kind of a simple workflow. Today, I want to do what might be a more realistic workflow. Specifically, I have an image that I want to edit that is in Bridge but I also want to use some plugins on it as well. It's this image right here. You can see it is a photo of a great blue heron. It was taken at some distance and it has some noise in it. So the first plugin I'd like to use is Topaz Labs to Noise AI to remove the noise. Then I'd like to edit it in Camera Raw. And during that editing, I'm going to crop it so it's a lot tighter on the great blue heron. Because I'm cropping away a lot of pixels, I then want to use Gigapixel AI to increase the resolution. So how do you go about using these plugins in Adobe Bridge? Well, it's a little bit quirky, but I think you'll see that actually it works out better, and you'll see when I do it. So let's get started. I have the image here. I'm in the Essentials workspace, and I've mentioned many times in any video for any application that you should try to remove noise as early in your workflow as possible. This is a totally unedited RAW file. I haven't done anything to it. I'm going to remove noise right away. Now to get this image into uh, Topaz Labs to Noise AI from Adobe Bridge, if you're in the Essentials workspace, you could just right click right on the image and go to Open With. If you go to Open With, you could see all your plugins that you have installed in Photoshop and Lightroom are here. So you could access it here. Now, I specifically mentioned if you're in the Essentials workspace, because if you're in any other workspace, it's a little different. For example, if you're in the Filmstrip workspace, if you right click on the image, you could see that that option is not available here. To get to it, you have two ways. You could right click right on the image in the film strip, and then you could see Open With is there. Or you could go up to File, and then down to Open With here. So that's the way we'll do it right now. And I mentioned I want to use Topaz Labs Denoise AI right here. So we're going to click on that. Now, for those of you that are familiar with Lightroom, know that a dialog box pops up and asks you some questions and options. You don't have that here. It just opens the image directly into uh, Denoise AI. Now, this was shot really at relatively low ISO, so there isn't a ton of noise, but I do want to use Denoise AI to remove the noise because it will just do a really good job. So I'm not going to be too fussy about it, and I'm not going to be really doing a demonstration uh, how-to video on Denoise AI. Um, but let's just say that I like the standard AI model with the default model preferences. So that's the one I'm going to use right there. So I'm going to click Save Image. Now this is one of the quirks that I've mentioned when you're using a plugin with Adobe Bridge that actually works out better. I'll click Save Image and you have options now. I could actually save this as a DNG image. So that's a raw image. Uh, with Lightroom, of course, it's a TIFF file. So you lose your raw format when you send an image into Denoise AI from Lightroom. But here you could keep the raw format. Now I'm going to keep it in the source directory. That's the exact same folder it was originally in. Uh, it's going to get renamed because it's now a DNG. So it leaves the original raw file alone. It's non-destructive, doesn't do anything there. Now preserve input settings. If I turn this on, what it will do, you see how it got that DNG option was gone. Uh, because this is a raw file, it's not going to save it as a dot, it's an icon raw file, it's a dot NEF file. It will save it as a DNG. So this, having this on DNG or having this off is the same exact thing for this instance. If I go down here to this uh, dropdown, I have options to save it as a JPEG, TIFF, 
or a PNG file as well. But as I mentioned, I want to save that DNG file. Now, if this wasn't a raw file, if I opened a JPEG up in here and I had this turned on, then it would save it as a JPEG. That's what that means. So we're going to save with that DNG, and that's our directory. Nothing special. We'll click Save Image. Now, here's another little quirk. It's going to do its thing, and it's not going to close down automatically. You may be used to it, you know, just closing down automatically and returning you to Lightroom. You just wait for this check mark to appear over here on the right. You're all done. Just go down and quit Denoise AI. Now, you might have to wait a second or two, but it will appear here in the film strip. Um, because it, you don't have to import, if you saw my video last week, you don't have to import images uh, directly into um, Bridge. You just navigate to where they are on your computer and it will automatically find them in the folder. Since this folder was already open, it found it. So it's right here. So here is our image. And now to zoom in on Bridge is a little weird, but you can see there's our noise reduced image. If I go to the other one. You could see how kind of blurry that one is. And look, Denoise AI did a nice job of sharpened it and everything. Right? Okay, so we have the noise reduced. Now we're going to be working on this DNG file right here, not the .nef. And just to make sure I don't screw up, let's give it a star rating of five stars so I could see the stars there. That's the one I'm going to work on going forward. Now, I want to... Just process this like I normally do. And with Bridge, uh, you're going to be doing your work in Camera Raw. So to do that, you could just go up to uh, right-click right on the image, no matter what workspace you're in, and just go down to Open in Camera Raw. So it'll open this up in Camera Raw. Now we could do our editing. Now I mentioned that I wanted to crop it here. All right. So let's do some cropping right here. And I think I'll keep the original ratio. I'm just going to make it a lot tighter. Something like that. Maybe just a little bit so I get that bottom of this stump in there. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's a lot better. Maybe we'll just... Let me go back to crop again. Let's just move it this way just a touch. There we go. Okay, that's a lot better. Now let's just do a quick edit on it. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Bring the highlights down. Open up the shadows quite a bit. Then we're going to get a white point. Like that. We'll get a dark point. A lot of like, darkness up in here, and I don't care about that. It looks pretty good. Let's add just a tiny bit of texture. A little tiny bit of clarity. But that background, boy, that is very distracting. It is so green back there, isn't it? And I didn't even touch vibrance and saturation. So I really want to subdue that a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to masking. I'm going to select the background. And it, it selected part of the tree over here, but that's okay. And all I want to do here, let's go to saturation. And I just want to pull some of the saturation out of that background. It's, it's just too overwhelmingly green. Let's uh, create another mask and select the subject. And that's good. And let's here, let's just make the bird just a tiny bit brighter. And let's um, go to sharpness and sharpen it up a little bit. So that looks pretty good. All right. And then I'm going to finish this off. Let's go back to our edit panel and go to effects. And let's put a little bit of a dark vignette, but let's feather it a little more than that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So I'm done here. Now, here's another little quirk. If I just click done and I return us to, you know what, why don't I just demo it? It might be easier. So let me click done and return us to um, Adobe Bridge. Now I mentioned I want to open this up in Gigapixel. And to get it in Gigapixel, again, we'll go up to File. And then we'll go down to Open With, and we'll go down to Gigapixel AI. The problem is, Adobe Camera Raw is non-destructive. And when we open this up into Gigapixel AI, Gigapixel AI isn't going to see the crop. And it isn't going to see, I don't know, let's go to uh, here. 
It, is, it didn't see the crop and it didn't see our edits. So there's a quirk, but, there, but this is easy to work around this, close without saving. All right, so let's go back into Camera Raw. All right, so this is right where we left off in Camera Raw. I, I applied that vignette, remember? And the bridge is jumping at me here, okay? So I applied this uh, vignette right where I left off. So what you need to do if you plan on sending this to a plugin after you use Camera Raw is click on Open. This will open it up into Photoshop. Now in Photoshop, all you need to do is save it. This is where we're going to lose our um, our raw um, like uh, you know format at this point. But really, the image I'm done editing it, so I, I don't really need to worry about preserving the raw format any further. But what we need to do is save this into a file type that Gigapixel can read. So what we need to do is just go up to uh, File, Save As, and save it as a TIFF file because Gigapixel can read a TIFF file. Now, if you're not using Gigapixel, you're using a different plugin, and that plugin might read Photoshop files, or it might only read JPEGs or something like that. In that case, uh, well, if it's a JPEG, you'd have to go to File, Export As, and then export it as a JPEG. But right now, we're just going to save it as a TIFF file. And just keep the default settings and click OK. Now, another little quirk, it won't close down Photoshop, so you need to close down Photoshop. And then when we return to Adobe Bridge, it may take, take a second, but that other file will um, appear. It's the TIFF file now. You can see it says TIFF. This is the image we're going to send to Gigapixel AI. And this one, I'll do it a different way. I'll right-click right on the image. I'll go down to Open With or Up to Open With and over and down to Gigapixel AI. Now you'll see that it recognized the crop and it recognized our edits. And there's our image. Let's go to, just so you could see it, we'll zoom to fit. Okay, so you can see that it recognized our crop. Now again, this isn't um, a how-to video on how to use Gigapixel AI. This is, more specifically, a video on how to use Gigapixel AI as a plugin with Bridge. So we'll let it do its thing. It has to go through and update each of these different resize modes. Uh, let's see. Right now, the image is 2039 by 3063. And if I go to a 2x increase in resolution, it's 4078 by 6126. I think that's actually very good. Um, looks like just eyeballing them, the bottom ones aren't totally updated yet. And here's the top one or I must have accidentally moved it. One thing, if you're not familiar with Gigapixel AI, if you slightly move the image just a little bit, everything has to re-render and update. And if you zoom in more, it'll go a little faster because there's less pix pixels to update. So we'll let it do its thing this way. This will be a little faster. And it looks like standard, just looking at them, actually is the best. Lines in the lower left-hand corner is definitely over-sharpened. Um, the other two don't look bad, but I think standard looks best. So I'm just going to go with that, with the default automatic settings. I mentioned that we're going to use a 2x uh, scale increase, and doing that will uh, result in an image that is 4,078 by 6,126 pixels. And we'll click Apply. Now, again, after it's done, it won't automatically close. So you're going to have to automatically close it. You just have to wait for it to be done. And then this one won't create a fourth image. You know, we had three images down there. We had the original RAW file. Then we had the DNG file, which was returned from Denoise AI. Then we had the TIFF file, which was returned from Photoshop. Well, it doesn't give you a fourth file. This is the actual image that we have now. It's this one. It's the TIFF file right here. Can get the, there we go. And you can see that it's 4,078 by 6,126 pixels. 
So that's it for today's video. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.